Hey guys, welcome back to Order and Law. This is O B G Y N. Okay, guys. So today we're gonna talk about diagnosis of preterm. Diagnosis of preterm. Okay, guys. So diagnosis of preterm is really very important because the management is really very important. That's why, and it's a fatal condition. So you have to be very cautious for that. That's why you should diagnose the preterm very early, and you should look for the signs of diagnosis. So let's talk about this: how to diagnose a pre diagnosis of what you call a preterm labor. Okay, preterm labor. Sorry. Mm. Okay, preterm labor. Right. So let's talk about this. Remember, there, if there is a, what you call a regular uterine contractions regular uterine contractions with or without pain remember she can have a pain she may not have the pain okay in a previous video we discussed about the true labor pain versus false labor pain so try to watch that video and here in this we are telling you that if you want to diagnose the preterm labor she may or may not have the pain. So pain is not the criteria for that. But regular uterine contractions must. Okay, at least one in every 10 minutes. Uterine contractions, one in every 10 minutes. Remember, one per 10. At least, okay. Then the dilatation of the, what you call, cervix dilatation is more than two centimeters. Okay. And effacement of 80% of effacement of cervix. Remember, 80%, right? And the length of the cervix, length of the cervix, length of the cervix, okay, measured by transvaginal sonography, should be less than 2.5 centimeter and funneling of internal os and funneling of internal os less than 2.5 centimeter okay and funneling of tunnel tunnel internal os funneling tunnel of funneling of internal os okay and the other symptoms being like a pelvic pressure, back ache, or vaginal discharge, or a bleeding could be the signs that indicates she might be in the preterm labor. So these are the important signs and symptoms of what you call preterm labor. So guys, remember the most common cause for the preterm labor is chorioamnitis. Remember, and the most common organism responsible for this is Uroplasma urolyticum and G vaginum that's a gardener law vaginum okay guys so thank you so much for watching this video take care